through it, you um, check and see if you were breached. If you were breached, you definitely, definitely got to go ahead and get credit monitoring at the least. Two other things that you could do is put fraud alert on your credit report. Um, they'll contact you anytime somebody, you know, pulls your credit report. It's renewable every 90 days and it's free. So you can do fraud alert or you can place a freeze on your account as well. Uh, that means they, they type in your information and nothing comes up. Nobody's going to be able to get anything without your say so as um, far as looking at your credit. So you look and see if you are dealing with your credit, you might be dealing with your credit as far as getting something, purchasing a home or whatever in the next month or so. You may not want to do a fraud or a freeze, but you definitely, definitely want to do credit monitoring. So that is a must. So make sure you do that. All right. So we talked about your credit score, talked about where you get your credit scores from, all of those things. There are, let me mention this, because um, there have been some questions about, you know, FICO versus um, Avantage score or what score I'm getting from Credit Karma. That Credit Karma score seems different from the score I'm even getting from Credit Sesame versus what my bank is telling me. So there's a little bit of confusion behind that. So let me go ahead and clear some of that up for you guys today. All right. So FICO, FICO created basically created this entire system that we're using now fico is the fair isaac corporation they also are a, a um a company not part of the government or anything of that nature two guys mr fair and mr isaac got together back in the 50s and they said let's collect data let's decide how are we going to um know if we're going to lend money to somebody if they'll pay it back so they created, you know, what we have today, 90 to 95 percent of all lenders, doesn't matter if it's for um, automobiles, if it's for mortgages, if it's for credit cards, 90 to 95 percent of all lenders use FICO. That's what they use. That's the number that they use. However, there is this thing called Vantage or a Vantage score. And so Vantage is coming along, which appears there's been some kind of a holy uh, or unholy, if you will, alliance between the three major credit bureaus. And again, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, where they're utilizing Vantage scores. So when you see Credit Karma and that score, it's a different scoring model. Even FICO has different scoring models. They're like your phone. They upgrade and upgrade. FICO's on FICO 9.0, but Vantage is... Um, now trying to come into their own and to have people utilize them more so than FICO. Now, again, if they've only got 5 to 10% of the marketplace, that's not the major score that you should be concerning yourself about. Is Credit Karma something great to have? Absolutely. You should get Credit Karma. If only for the access to the actual credit report, you should get Credit Karma. Because that information on the credit report is the same whether you get it from Credit Karma or Quizzle or directly from TransUnion or Equifax or Experian. Or if you get it from your bank, it's all the same information. That score on Credit Karma may be different because they're using a Vantage score. But it's a very good gauge. If that score is going up, most of the time, your FICO score is going up, and that's what you want to happen all of the time. You want to keep that score going up. So, what was I talking about? All right, so now we're back to going ahead, and, you know, that's what's working. Um, that's what's working, and that's how it works. You know, you got FICO, and then you got Vantage score. The only difference, primarily, primarily, the only difference is FICO is... Um, I wouldn't call it backwards looking, but they're more historic looking. They're creating and have created your score off of what you do historically. So historically, this person has paid, you know, their their um, credit cards on time or historically, this person has not paid their car note on time. Historically, this person has uh, gone out and got a bunch of accounts at one point in time, and then they didn't do anything for three or four years. So they're looking historically and trying to predict what you're going to do in the future with FICO. With Vantage and Vantage Score, what they're attempting to do, because it's really basically just rolling this out toward the end of this year, what they're attempting to do is to take some of the things that you've done in the past and evaluate your risk for the future. So it 
does seem like the same thing, but it's not. Because here's what they do with the advantage. So the fact that, okay, let's do it like this. On FICO, the fact that you have, you know, like a lot of credit um, available on your um, credit cards is a positive for FICO, for your FICO score. That's a positive in there. Like Vantage says that is a negative to have so much credit available to you because one day you might just go out and go crazy with that credit card and then you're going to charge it up and that's a serious risk factor uh, for you. So your score could be lower on Vantage simply because you have credit that's available. Now, if I was you, and this is what I am advising, I wouldn't worry about what Vantage score has to say because Vantage is only, you know, 5 to 10% of the market. If you walk into any um, auto dealership between here and Timbuktu, or if you go to any place and say, hey, I want to get a mortgage, most of the time, almost 100% of the time, especially with a mortgage, they're going to be looking at FICO scores. So that's the number that you need to, that you need to concern yourself about. So you're saying, all right, you keep talking about FICO, FICO, but I can get my Credit Karma score, no problem. Where do I get my FICO score? You can get your FICO score by going to um, www.myfico.com. So if you go to myfico.com, you can get your credit score there. Yes, it may cost you. If you listen to the show at all, you know, you can call me cheap if you want, but I don't like anything that's going to cost you to go ahead and get information. So you can go to my, myfico.com. You can also go to discover.com. Yes, discover the people with the card. You can go to them. Whether you have a card with them or not, they will give you your FICO score. And it's going to be free. So you can give them a call. You can go online and you can get your um, FICO score there. You can get the app. They have an app. You don't even have to have a um, an account with them. So I would suggest that you go ahead and do that if you want to know what your FICO score is. Now, to confuse you even further when it comes to your FICO score and whatnot, let me do this. So you have several FICO scores. You know, of course, there's that three companies, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, but you have several FICO scores because some of them are industry-specific. Industry so you'll have um, a one score that could be for mortgages. You have one co score that could be for vehicles. You have one score that's for credit cards. So you have all of these different scores. So every time you pull your credit report, you most likely won't repeat the same number each and every time you pull your credit report or it's run. So you need to be aware of that because a lot of people are like, oh, my God, this number is so wrong. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do about it? That's not what I was told before. It's not necessarily an issue or a problem. All right. So let's go ahead and um, let me do a couple more shout outs and we can get through the rest of the show for today. So I got to give a huge, huge shout out to Dr. Sean Harper. He celebrated a birthday earlier this week. So happy, happy birthday to you. Uh, Dr. Harper, um, this guy, this guy, um, I don't know, man, I, I, we are almost roommates back in the day. So he was trying to convince me to um, go to Indiana University and get my MBA at one point in time. And, and I always used to joke with him and tell him that, you know, he was going to be the president of a, a small college one day. Um, I got to amend that because I think one day he might be the president of USC. That's not a small college. He might be the president of, you know, North Carolina. I don't know. He might be the president of Penn or Penn State one day. So happy, happy birthday to you, Sean Hopper. Um, I want to give a happy shout, a happy birthday shout out to Tony Mytall as well. So happy birthday to you, Tony. Happy birthday to Eric Hunter. Eric Hunter, I see you, man. We went to high school together. So definitely got to give him a, a happy birthday shout out. I got to give Vanessa James a happy birthday shout out. Her birthday shout out should have been last week. And I was so, so busy and ridiculously caught up that I missed giving her his last week. So I apologize and I want to say happy birthday to you. So I think it was last Friday. So right before the show on Saturday, and I'm a little discombobulated sometimes when it comes to that. So, all right, um, Vanessa James, happy birthday to you. All right. So let's let's go ahead and let's finish out a little bit 
on the show and then um, then i'm gonna give some more shout outs to end the show as well so we talked about you know where your credit score comes from what it runs through and all of those things you know fico versus vantage let's also talk about all of the major things that you need to look you need to look for i've said it time and time again on your credit report all of the things that you can manipulate there are five different factors that make up your credit score right so we've been going through them forever you know payment history um the average length of your history your mix or you know the type of accounts that you have your inquiries and your uh credit card um your debt utilization that goes with your credit card so you know you have those five factors your job is not only and this is where a lot of companies and a lot of individuals fall short this you think that to improve your credit score all you need to do is remove all those bad items off my credit report. All those collections and everything else that I've got on my credit report that's bad, all I need to do is remove those. And if I remove those, my credit score is going to go up. And you may even think, maybe you think this far. You say, I'm going to remove all those things, but I'm going to continue to pay. I'm going to continue to pay you know, my bills on time, and that's going to get me a good credit score. And it probably should happen overnight it's not going to happen overnight all right it doesn't work that way but let me tell you one yes you should get rid of all of those collections and uh whatever other things that they have on your credit report get rid of all those negative items items if you can as many as you can will that raise your credit score absolutely you're getting rid of those negatives but there are positive things that you need to do to um impact your credit score For you to get the best or the most points or the most bang for your buck, you've got to actually do some things, you know, positive for your credit report. So the first thing, you know, 35% of your score is based off of how well you pay. All those people out there that think that, hey, you know, if I pay on time, my credit score will be perfect. That's not the case. Only 35% of your score is based off what you pay. So make sure that you pay on time. 100% 100% pay history, if you drop it down to 98, your score is going to fall 30, 40%. I mean, uh, 30, 40 points. That's kind of what happens when you do that. So pay on time. Talk to, I'm going to save the debt utilization portion for last. Inquiries, that's only for hard inquiries. You know there's a difference between the hard ones and the soft ones. So a soft inquiry is, for example, if... um your uh employer or your prospective employer pulls a credit report on you that's a soft inquiry if you're looking on credit karma you might be able to see it but other lenders will not be able to see it because it's soft you're not ask actually seeking credit from you know an employer same thing with like um if your uh, insurance agent pulls a credit report on you and it's for you know just for insurance purpose car insurance you know your home insurance property insurance then if it's just for that you won't you will not be deemed for that it's a soft inquiry a hard inquiry is anytime that you're seeking credit if you're actually seeking credit that's going to be a hard inquiry um i think that like even now with the fact that you basically have to buy your cell phone uh, so you switch from one carrier to the other that's a hard inquiry you basically got to buy it you're going to do it on a monthly basis so that's a hard inquiry or it should be that'll show up on your credit report so those are the kinds of things that show up it's 10 percent of your score so it's 10 percent of your score but there's absolutely nothing positive about an inquiry for you it's good for lenders because then they get to look at all your inquiries and say oh this person applied here they applied there maybe this was their competition they wonder if you actually got an account or did you not not get an account and should they be thinking differently because they're thinking about giving you money but x y and z company denied you so those are all the things that are good for them not necessarily good for you so let's go with your mix or the type of accounts that you have there's two different accounts revolving and uh, installment you've got to have both you need to have both to get the most points if you will for your credit report revolving is going to be your credit cards maybe even a home equity line of credit but your installment is going to be your car notes your student loans things of that nature uh last week we talked about selflender.com that is a installment loan so you're going to need those things that's 10 percent of your credit score 15% of your score is your average length of history. You're thinking my credit score length of history should be long because I've had credit since I was 18 and now you're 40. 
well it's 22 years but that's not how it works you got one account when you were you know 18 you got one when you're 25 you got three in the last 